What is next for Composite Doors, Roger? Well, if I can just uh, kind of summarise what I said earlier, that as far as hardware and handles are concerned, I think uh, historically there has been this um, follow through of using standard products that were used 10, 15 years ago. And I think when you look at the quality of the doors now, they, they look out of place, they don't fit right with the quality. So I mentioned again the Fit Show was a great platform for particularly my company to show new products, show new innovations. And I think the whole design of handles on doors is changing. And with the support of these guys around the table, I think there's a great opportunity to give the consumer something different. And we're talking of, and the good thing is we're talking of high quality, high value products. And they're not commodity, they're not me too. And I think I also mentioned that we work in partnership with some major uh, door lock man manufacturers. They're bringing product to market, which needs new innovations. So in terms of operating and closing the door, we can now bring new features, new ideas to the door. So I think um, I'm quite excited by the idea that handles and hardware is going to change, hopefully, for the better. And we're going to see a, an emergence of new colours, new designs, and it's really exciting. So I think that's, that's going to be, specifically for hardware, that's going to be the change for the future. How important is variety when it comes to, to the conversation? I, <coughs> I think, again, this, uh, historically, uh, when you talk of uh, colours and finishes, the polished finishes for the, the consumer have been very popular, like a chrome finish. But I think... Uh, We've seen in the last two years stainless steel as a material come through for the consumer and for the trade customers. Now, stainless steel in the commercial environment has been used for over 10 years, but I think stainless steel gives us good opportunities to have something different. And Guy, what's next in the glass sector? Um, we've been supplying glass to composite door markets now for seven years. We've seen a, a large increase in the range of glass options that we have because it's all about differentiation. Customers don't want to have the same, always the same as their neighbour. Um, fabricators such as Mark want to have unique products so he can differentiate himself from his competitors. I think there'll be a continual evolution of, of more glass products. I do believe there'll be some other big change in the market going forward. I think the, the use of colour will become very important. Um, Historically, the composite door's been sold in red, blue, green, black, and white. Um, and that a lot of those have been used in social housing contracts. I believe that the consumer wants to have the choice. Mm -hmm. that that's what will be one of the big drivers going forward. we increase increasing colour. Uh, we've seen it in the window industry. Mm -hmm. Huge proportion of the window industry is now using coloured foils, uh, particularly at the higher end of the market. And the composite door market is the higher end of the door market. So I do believe there'll be a big move to colour. Um, and I think there'll be more changes of design in the door as well. A lot of the door market has been using what we call the standard twin vertical, two panels down the door. Mm. Um, we've seen in the last year the move to the contemporary door, where people are using uh, glazing cassettes in in different configurations on a flush door to make a more modern, contemporary look. We as a company have developed products of that industry as well. We have our inox glazing system to give a European feel to the door. I believe the, I think there'll be a much wider range of product going forward. Um, Do you worry, though, that by offering a wider range of variety, puts more pressure on a manufacturer and therefore there is a danger of manufacturers wanting to cut costs, bring price down to su supply these wider demands. Um, I do think if you have wider product range it does put more pressure on the manufacturer um, but we are also trying to maintain a higher price. If all the product looks the same in the industry the only differentiator mm. the likes of Mark has as a fabricator is price. I think we all agreed that we're trying to get the price in the market to stay, maybe even to go up slightly. And that will only happen by differentiation and making the product different from your competitors, mm. which is mm. colour, glass, hardware, and maybe glazing styles. And, and just echoing your, those sentiments, Guy, the move away from what we class as the traditional door style to, to, to the more contemporary style, tends to bring with it 
architectural hardware, uh, a higher perceived specification, a higher actual specification as well as a higher perceived specification, and a higher perceived price and, a, and, a, and a, an improved margin for everybody. Um, it, it, it's the it's the right way to move forward. However, I mean, quite interestingly, what we consider as a contemporary panel or contemporary door in the UK is the traditional norm in Europe. Yes, that's correct. Well, we've not actually touched on the fire door product. By its very nature, a social housing product, but there must be some opportunities, given the fact that it's outwardly indistinguishable from the, the normal, regular composite offering. I, I think you're right, Mark, uh, and, and you're right. I mean, traditionally, it has been uh, very much a, a social housing product, uh, or certainly in our experience anyway. Um, in, in terms of our total sales, it represents probably about 40,000 doors per annum, uh, which is predominantly going into the social housing market, uh, particularly into the tower blocks. But again, you're absolutely right, there are opportunities. Um, I think there's opportunities for it to be a specified product going forward. Um, we see quite often these days that there are apartments being built and I think there's an opportunity that's being missed there and actually getting specified with architects. Mm -hmm. And again, coming back to what we talked about in terms of the contemporary styles or looks, uh, there's an opportunity to upgrade what would be tr a traditional door style into something much more in keeping with uh, the architecture that's taking place today. It will certainly traverse into the retail market, but uh, as I say, it's stable, it's clearly commercial marketplace. Yeah, it, it, it very much is. And, and again, it, it, I think the beauty is uh, the flexibility of the product, um, the fact that it can be a standard entrance door, the fact that it can be a fire door, both as a 30-minute uh, a, a fire door and a 60-minute fire door, it lends itself to different applications. And I think the more people that are aware of what can be done with the door and the applications and that there's significant testing that's been taken place, not just with PVC frames, but also with timber frames as well. Because let's not forget it from an internal application, timber frames would be used much more than a PVC frame would be. So I definitely think there are opportunities there and, and really, to be honest, not yet tapped into by anybody in any significant numbers. Yeah. Still opportunities. Yeah. Well, I would, I would agree with both of you. We've been, as a company, involved in the glass industry looking quite closely recently at fire-rated decorative glass. I believe if you are going to develop the composite door into, uh, into apartment blocks, which is quite a large market, um, decorative glass is still an important part of it. Not everybody wants a solid door. Um, so we've been working quite closely with uh, several suppliers recently on that. And we, we now have a solution which the market didn't have previously. Historically, Fire-rated glass was Georgian wired, which looked... Mm. <laughs> but investment in fire doors <laughs> tends to have us grown as well. We, we, we Top lights, side light combinations. Yes. There has been an investment in fire doors, and we, we certainly are trying to think that we're at the forefront of that. Mm. We certainly push that forward, and like you say, decorative elements now are coming to the fore. Mm. Yeah, I would say that uh, with Hoppy UK, that we have a division that is selling predominantly commercial architectural market so the timber market dominates fire doors from where I can see um, you mentioned apartment buildings and we provide a range of hardware that is meeting all the standards the criteria for closing doors handles locks etc so I think for composite doors there, there has to be a great opportunity to introduce composites more into that market absolutely yeah it's clearly an emerging product in every yeah. respect absolutely yes. um, I, th I think it's all of those things um, and, and, and when we talk purely about the, the product, um, you know, there are, I mean, I can only talk from our, our personal point of view, but there are more styles uh, in the pipeline. We will be launching later this year a 70 millimeter door, which is a thicker door, which adds even more insulation uh, and actually moves the bar even higher. Uh, we've recently uh, launched what we call a one light door which can be used for patio doors and for bifold doors. So these are, again, bifold doors seem to be the, the in thing at the moment. But I don't lose focus away from, uh, as, a, as, a, as a nation, we are fairly traditional in, a, in what we like. And Guy mentioned there the twin vertical door. Eight years ago, that particular door represented 65% of our door sales. Today, it represents 65% of our door sales. That hasn't changed because as a nation, we have a certain level of comfort in what feels 
right what we what we see and what we accept and there's a place for all these other things there is a place for contemporary doors we've introduced stable doors which work fantastically in the older traditional cottage style properties but they are all bit players i think that the interesting part of it all is the choice mm -hmm. and you you develop these products to to try and um give something a little bit different but not lose focus on what's really important is the choices that are available and whether that comes through the choice of the the door furniture the the color choices for the particular product the the types of glass that you use and the styles of the glass and the techniques i mean i've learned so much about glass in the last two years it, it, I, I, it's just unbelievable the techniques that are involved uh, and and we are co constantly looking and looking to challenge and challenging the likes of guys saying what's new what's new how can we do something different contemporary doors we, we took a, a completely different view to what most of the industry has done and said, let's design glass that fits with contemporary doors because it's an overall aesthetic. Worked with the likes of Roger in, in developing um, the stainless steel handles, the, the long pull handles uh, that again match with it. And we're having phenomenal success with these, relatively speaking. We sell six and a half to 7,000 doors a week and all these little niche products probably represent 150 to 200 of those doors. Uh, we still sell somewhere in the region of three to three and a half thousand of the twin vertical door every single week into into the, the, the UK populace, and, and that's what people want. But we can do things, and I think there's a desire around this table. I think there's a desire within the industry to do things better, to do things smarter, to offer that choice. Look at the innovation, look at what's changing, look at how we can improve the product, and keep developing and offering that. But above all, what we have to do as a total industry and as individuals around this table is strive to keep the service high and improve on that all the time. Because there's one thing for certain, if you get the service right to the consumer, they never forget. And the best marketing and the best advertising available for the industry is word of mouth. I think I, I, again, I'm echoing your sentiments now. I think Thank in order to influence the, in order to, if we if we're going to influence the consumer with choice and expectation for the composite product, then that customer's expectations are going to be heightened. You know, we've got to give that we, whether that customer it's business to business level or business to consumer level, that we've got to give that customer's experience to be a positive one. Mm. It, it's definitely, we sell. We need to sell the package, not just the product. As wet, expansive as that product may be, yeah. it's the whole overall package. Absolutely. Well, we've been talking a lot about choice, but how much choice is there really for the consumer? And how do we cascade that choice down the supply chain? Roger. Yeah, I think um, using the principle of good, better and best in products, uh, clearly we, we can do that um, through product segmentation. So. Generally, uh, in, a, in our market, we see a lot of the, the good standard products being th sold through to the supply chain. I think, uh, directly, I don't have any influence on the consumer. Clearly, there are a number of customers we deal with, could do a lot more on the choice. And I think, when we talk of the high quality, and we talk about giving added value and, and different designs, different performance levels, warranties, there is definitely a potential good demand to the consumer. So I think in theory, if, if we can upsell fourfold from a standard product, I think the consumer will buy into that. I, I clearly see it, but it's how we influence that supply chain from manufacturer to the consumer. And as I said a short time ago, I can't see Hoppy directly influencing the market. We can only educate, inform, present, and give the, uh, the values of the product that we have. But I think that's an important idea I am, I'm not quite sure I've got the answers for that, but... Guy, do you have the answers? I'll have a go. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, we've, we have to talk a lot about choice. Um, we were talking about door energy ratings and, you know, as a company, we provide um, option for the um, insulated glass for the door to be provided with a low E and gas filled to give a better performance on a door energy rating. That option is not always passed down to the customer. There is some value in that option. And this debate's been a lot about adding margin. And I think if we take a product, for example, the, the gas-filled low-E insulated glass unit, which for a door set might add £5 to the cost mm -hmm. into the trade, 
at the consumer level, if the consumer was offered that, given that option, said it's a £25 uplift, I think most consumers would take it. Particularly if it takes them from a C rated door to a B rated or a B to an A. We now have £25 of, of margin, which has been generated on that door, that can be divided along the supply chain. It could be Mark could take some of it, the installer can take some of it, the, the reseller, everyone can share that margin. But that only happens if you give the customer the option and the choice, give them the choice to buy it. It's rather like, I'd say, you buy a BMW car. Your three series BMW starts at £27,000. By the time it's out of the showroom, for most people, it's, it's over £30,000. Mm -hmm. It's because the, the consumer's been given a choice. Would you like to add the other leather seats for £1,200? Mm. Obviously, we know it doesn't cost BMW £1,200 to put the leather seats in, but it creates a lot more margin in the product. But now the dealer can share, BMW themselves can share. This is the principle, I think, with a composite door. And some, some manufacturers have embraced this and actually are offering a much wider choice and giving it as mm. incremental price increases to start from a base level and build the product up in value. And I th it's a challenge for us as, as manufacturers of product mm. <clears throat> to encourage the fabricators, like of Mark, to be able to offer this choice and to, to give the different levels of product this, yeah, good, that's better, the challenge, best. Though, that's the, the challenge, challenge we all challenge. have. Well, we've talked about product differentiation and with it has brought a dearth of new products, all of which need to be evaluated, assessed and brought to market and introduced. And again, um, although we, are, you know, we deal business to business, we still, we, the best we can do is introduce those products and make our fabricator stroke installer, which is the main market we serve, aware of those products. Uh, as to whether that then gets cascaded down to the consumer, then that's questionable. Um, traditionally, uh, our, uh, not all fabricators, mm -hmm. but many fabricators offer one set product yeah. with one set locking system, with one set of handles, with one set of hardware. Um, that's yeah. changing yeah. because, as, as I said, because of product differentiation, I think particularly you, on the yeah. composite. If you product. take security in, in isolation, I think every consumer, if they had a, a nice new composite door, a thousand pound, whatever, and he was told, for another £50, you're going to give you real security enhancement. They'll, they'll pay for that money. They'll pay for it, won't they? Without question. And but then is there not an argument to say, well, why aren't I getting that extra security to start with? Because isn't this well, what a composite door is all about? I'm sure, I'm sure some about. installers and fabricators do that, but I think I hear, I hear little reports and feedbacks that doesn't happen. So I think we can improve that. Similar to you guys, we are a, a component supplier, and, and I think it's sometimes difficult to, to, to have a, an impact uh, directly on the consumer and 18 months ago we took a decision that we were going to try and uh, educate the consumer by doing something a little bit different and, and our, our strategy was to first of all rebrand the business we were very much seen as a trade to trade business and all we did was sell components into into the trade and that to be fair is all we will ever do in terms of our direct commercial routes however we believe that there's a real need to actually educate the consumer and make them aware. And what we've tried to do and what we are working on is actually developing a brand and developing a focal point for all of our customers to tap into and indeed their customers and ultimately the end user by trying to educate them on things like security, on energy ratings, uh, on the aesthetics and what you can do. And we've just opened last month our first retail showroom in conjunction with Nationwide Windows, one of our major uh, customers. And the whole theme, whilst it looks nice and, it, and, and it's a very interactive and very tangible experience for people to go in, is there is education mm -hmm. behind every door. Quite literally, they open a door and it's talking about uh, energy ratings. They open another door and it is talking about the security. And the whole point, and, and Roger picked up on the, um, the, the phrase there, the, the good, better and best. And that's very much the, the philosophy behind what we're trying to achieve. What I think is absolutely important is that the good is a high enough standard that it does actually meet all the standards uh, that are required. So to answer your question there, good absolutely ticks all the boxes. Mm -hmm. In terms of the better and the best, so every one of our doors, for example, we know will achieve a minimum of a C energy rating. However, as Guy says, 
if you want to, you can upgrade to a laminated glass product so you can have secured by design. You can upgrade to low E so you can take the C energy rating up to a B or a B up to an A. Again, in terms of the door furniture, you can have a standard uh, uh, door handle that is probably a Me Too product. Uh, but it is still capable of meeting the requirements of Secure by Design. However, if you want something a little bit different, a little bit fancier, a little bit nicer, you can upgrade into the designer handles that we've um, that we've introduced. And there are features and benefits around them. There's interchangeable levers. Uh, they're made of solid brass rather than uh, of an aluminium product. So again, it's mm -hmm. giving the discerning customer, somebody who's got an aspiration to have something a little bit better, a little bit nicer, they can do that. It doesn't change the performance of the door in terms of the, the, the standard entry level is is already more than fit for purpose. It enables you to just take it that little bit higher if you want to. And we're already seeing in a very, very short space of time some fantastic feedback in terms of the showroom, but also how that translates into the numbers as well. It really is having an impact. Well, thanks to everyone involved in the great composite door debate. If you have an opinion, please get involved via the comments box below. New research has revealed that a new house buyer takes approximately eight seconds to decide whether to buy or not to buy. Four of them seconds are spent looking at the door. Thanks for watching. From all of us here, it's goodbye.